Pleased to be joined now here at Blogging the Boys by Blogging the Boys' own Dave Sturcio. You know him from the Cowboys Wire in written form, also from Jersey Boys on Mondays, which you can hear on the network, also from Chop Sports. He never sleeps. He's always hustling. He's always bustling. Sturge, how goes it? Oh, it's going good, man. Happy Friday or happy recording day, at least. Uh, but yeah, now we're it's, uh, I'm excited to be here, man. Thanks for the opportunity. I'm pumped you're here. This is our special blog and the boys roundtable discussion heading into the 2021 NFL draft. Um, he's Sturge. I'm Arjo Ochoa, of course. And we had to bring in the draft god, um, draft uh, historian, draft sleuth, draft troll in many senses. Uh, he's been on the blog and the boys podcast airwaves. He hates when I call them airwaves, uh, probably more than anybody that has never been officially affiliated with uh, with blog and the boys officially affiliated. There we go. Uh, the one and only from NFL Network, Bob. Bobby Belt, Robert, he of the Belt Maker Clan. How goes it? Uh, it's pretty good. I would explain in detail how much I hate that term, but you told me to keep it PG 13, so I can't <laughs> do that. Um, so we are recording Friday. This episode's going out on Sunday on our podcast network. It's also going out on the Blog and the Boys YouTube channel. Later on in the show, you will hear an interview that Kelsey Charles from Girls Talking Boys, also from The Star at Night, also from a thousand other things. She and I sat down with Dane Brugler, also from a thousand things, uh, notably The Athletic and the author of The Beast. Uh, we spoke about some particular needs that the Cowboys have, uh, some particular philosophies they can look to hold on to when it comes to the draft. But the three of us are here, gentlemen, uh, to kind of discuss to kind of just feel things out. It's kind of, um, I consider this like the Luby's line of the week. Um, you know, when you get there and you look down the slidey board thing um, and you can kind of see things you want, you know, you can't have it all. You know, there are particular things. If you're going to get the, um, is it the Luan platter? Um, you have to adjust like the proper combinations of things. Uh, so we're here to kind of set the tempo in that sense, since it is draft week. Bobby, I will start with you. Um, well, you and Sturch kind of share this opinion. Let's let's start with Kyle Pitts, because most people on this network outside of the Jersey Boys production are huge fans of the idea. Should he fall to number 10 overall on Friday? NFL Network's Ian Rappaport tweeted that the Cowboys were unlikely to trade up. I don't think anybody thought they would. I don't think anybody is a legitimate advocate for the idea of Kyle Pitts if they trade up. Uh, but Bobby, you hate the idea nonetheless. Why is that? I just think it's a terrible use of resources for a team that's in, in a bad spot. Like here's, here's the argument that I've made a bunch to people that I try and pitch. This is my best Kyle Pitts pitch that I can come up with first. If you're going to draft Kyle Pitts, fine. You've got to trade in a, one of the receivers. You got to trade Gallup. You got to trade and you got to do it before the end of day one. You got to have something probably lined up and, and ready to go in order to do that. You don't get Kyle Pitts to go Kyle Pitts and then three wide. I think it's stupid because here's the problem is that, you've maxed out your passing game with Dak Prescott. They were throwing for 500 yards and throwing for four touchdowns and everybody was eating with him. I don't think you are adding Kyle Pitts does not mean you are getting 600 yards or you're scoring mm -hmm. instead of 38 points, you're scoring 50 points. It means you're just changing up how it's divvied. And so it literally is a net neutral benefit to me to add Kyle Pitts. He is mm -hmm. great. He doesn't make sense here. That's just my opinion on it. So you didn't believe in Kevin Durant on the Warriors either, huh? Bold of you. I got a quick, I'm going to throw it back to you for a quick question. Okay. And, I, okay. and this is the way I've posited it to people. Imagine it's Slater and uh, Kyle Pitts there. And I imagine most people will want Kyle Pitts. But for this team, if you were told right now, you could just add, not have to trade anybody away, you could just add another Zach Martin, or you could also add Travis Kelsey. You think this team's better with Travis Kelsey than just another Zach Martin to stabilize the line? Good point. No, but I think the important you know, sp specifier you added was that it was for this team. And we all know this front office. And because I think, I think you both probably agree because you both share the, you know, uh, I guess, hatred for the idea um, that this, this front office isn't the most forward thinking. And so, but if, if by the end of next Thursday night, the Cowboys had drafted Kyle Pitts and traded away Michael Gallup. I think we would all agree that like from a timeline perspective, they would have, you know, gotten a little bit more organized. And that that is a legitimate, you know, uh, step forward, especially given the unknown potential compensation received from Michael Gallup. I agree with you that it is it isn't necessarily fruitful if you're just adding him in. I totally agree with that. But all I'm saying is like the ideal nirvana for me is drafting Kyle Pitts and trading Michael Gallup, even though I love Michael Gallup. But it sounds like you're in lockstep agreement with Bobby. 
Yeah, I mean, I look, first of all, trading off Michael Gallup now, I understand he's coming up on the contract year, but like, you know, they can get away from, I think this is like a perfect opportunity for them to kind of solve what they're going to do at wide receiver two, because by the end of this year, I truly believe that CeeDee Lamb could be wide receiver one. You know, I understand that like he's right now, he's the, you know, your slot guy and he's the inside, he can play outside, but you know, the, the competition is going to be Cooper and Gallup. And I think you can get out of the, the Cooper deal if you show you know if sure. you do so uh and next year and it'll only hit you like i think six million dollars off the cap so i i don't think trading gallup is a thing i i don't like that idea uh and just like you you know just like bobby said you know if you divvy off one why are we going off i i just i can't get behind the idea simply because i watched the dallas cowboy defense last year everybody saw the defense last year I, that's the only reason why I, I didn't jump on this kyle pitts train does kyle pitts look like the best player in the draft possibly you know that, that's great but you don't know how it's going to translate and if people are saying he's nfl ready and all that good stuff it just it for me i've watched enough bad defense to know that the defensive player the defensive pick i know you know bobby said slater might be there and again if you're asking me to to you know stock up on my offensive lineman i'm doing that before i add a, a kyle pitts i'm doing that like look why are we throwing the book at blake jarwin yes acl coming off you know, and, and dalton schultz serviceable contract year i get it but like these guys are more than w- willing to score 30 plus points a year or, uh, a game without kyle pitts like what are we That's doing fair. We got to stop. stop. You got to stop somebody from. <laughs> you guys are. Bo- you guys both hate fun. Um, you no, guys. Not- you, you, you order <laughs> cheese love- pizza when pepperoni is available. I, mean, I do. I do order pepperoni. I love. I love Trevor Lawrence. If Trevor Lawrence miraculously fell to ten, I wouldn't say draft Trevor Lawrence and trade Dak. I wouldn't say draft Trevor Lawrence because right. he's the best player available. It doesn't make sense to draft him. All right, fine. Let's let's steer into what was actually I, I on the say, rundown. I would say one more thing. One more thing. You got me started. You should have known. One more thing. I would say that, and this is me, and this will get me killed, and I don't care. Okay? I think drafting a running back at four in 2016 is a better use of resources than if they went and got Kyle Pitts at them. Some of that's, I mean, some of that's circumstantial. Like, obviously. And you know I'm not, like, the biggest, oh, yeah, pay Zeke guy. Right. Okay. Fine. Whatever. Let's again, I wanted to both, I wanted to like really upset you both. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like throw like ice water water on your face and and wake you up. Um, so let, let's maybe, maybe this is a part of your answer. Uh, search, we'll start with you here. What is your, you get the worst case. What is the worst case scenario for you when it comes to this draft with the Cowboys? The draft is a whole, so you can't be like they take Kyle Pitts at ten overall. Like what? What is the? And maybe it's they don't walk away with X. Maybe it's they walk away with too much of Y. But what is your absolute worst case scenario if it's Saturday afternoon and the results are all in? They need to go hard in the paint as a basketball reference to get yourselves stock up on linebackers and secondary if they don't walk away with you know five guys that that could represent that secondary to linebackers look you know the jersey boys podcast were big advocates for joe thomas i don't know why it was just like one of those feel-good players he's gone right and then you you get neil and now all of a sudden it's an experiment and that again that scares me like okay we're gonna bring neil down right and oh what is that gonna work i don't know we're just gonna try it you know what I mean? Like he's capable of doing this and I, that's fine. But then you're left with Jalen and LVE and and you're like, okay. And we still don't know. I haven't heard anything. Well, maybe you guys did, but Sean Lee, we don't know if that's going to be a thing. And if he, if he is, how many snaps is he going to play? So we really need to address the linebacker position. We were horrible against the run 31st or something like that. You know, Jalen. Yeah. Led the team in tackles 10 yards down the field. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not worried. I, I'm very worried about the linebacker position. As far as the secondary goes, Right now, you're looking at Anthony Brown, Jordan Lewis, and Trayvon Diggs, you know, as the, the key pieces to that secondary as far as the corners are concerned. Um, adding, a, a, a you know, a Patrick Sertain, you know, we'll talk you know, obviously more about that, but adding somebody like that gives you four solidifying corners. And they, they've actually addressed the safety. Have they addressed it enough? Probably not. So, like, secondary and linebackers is that, that core group. That would scare the crap out of me if we, you know, the 2021 draft comes and goes and you're like, oh, OK, but what about the linebackers or OK, but how did we not get more, you know, draft more corners? They have to take shots. They have to throw darts. Last year, it was a blessing in disguise to have a CD fall at 17. You can do that at 10. You have to hit the home run. It is it is absolute must. You have to hit it there. And then again, 
nobody, and I believe I, th- I saw a number saying that it was like a 1% or 2% chance that we would lay- land Trayvon Diggs in the second round, and we did. So it scares me that we're not going to have that kind of draft this year, but if you're not going to have the draft, you better stock up. You better stock up. Bobby, is that your fear too? Like if you are, um, if you're Cruz, was it Cruz in Coach Carter and you stand up in the middle of the gym doing, you know, the, was- the detention oh. homework or whatever? Well, wow. Um, I know. But what, I know. <laughs> uh, well, his, his deepest fear was that they were inadequate beyond measure. What is your deepest fear? Here? I mean, my deepest fear, as we've already said, would be drafting Kyle Pitts or trading That's up for that, Kyle okay. Pitts. You don't, Again, want that. Talk, you don't want that. I'm just saying. I avoided, overall. I avoided that altogether. All right. I'm just saying. That would overall, there's nothing they could do the rest of the draft if they drafted Kyle Pitts at 10 that would make me happy, just to say. Uh, I think the bigger issue hold up, is. Hold up, if, hold up. Hang on. Question, question. If, if they went that route, your immediate post pick reaction, Kyle Pitts as the Cowboys pick at 10 overall this year, hypothetically, versus Taco Charlton at 27 in 2017, what had you feeling more hollow inside? It'd be the same reaction, probably. That is Were you so there? stupid. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I, I, but, know, I know you knew my reaction. You weren't physically next to me, though, when they picked Taco, were you? I, I, but I, like you said, my like you said, like the biggest fear, my biggest fear was the whole like all week long, you're hearing trade up, trade up, trade up. And you're like, oh, my God, if they like they yeah, trade up like, to get this guy, forget it. You know, but like if, if for whatever reason, everybody under the sun is gone and it's not what I predicted as, as what's going to happen in that first round. And, and, and Kyle Pitts is staring you in the face and there's nothing else. You know, are you going to get mad to Adam? Not really, but like see, Bobby, see, it's, it's, no, I mean, that's not, no, it's, not, not, it's definitely not the thing. You can't do that's, it. That's, I mean, that's speaking rationally, and I don't do that. So, no, that would be the worst <laughs> thing to me would be Kyle Pitts, but you don't want that. So, I'm just saying, I want to get it out there. That is what it is. But, um, you know, it's funny. There's when it comes to grading drafts, you know, you always hear people within the league, like, you know, publicly and privately, they'll talk about like that. They think draft grades are silly. Cause it's like, these guys haven't played any games. You don't know what you're grading. Like a grade you give an F two now could be an a in three years. If everybody like all of a sudden looks great. So I know a working definition that a lot of people, um, and I can't remember who told me this. It, it was either somebody in the league or, or somebody else on the, a long term reporter. I can't remember, but somebody had said that the only way you can truly grade a draft is did they execute their plan? They came in there with a plan. Did they execute it or did they go off their plan? Did they get thrown off? Did things fall apart? Um, a good example of that is you remember when Houston wanted to get Andre Dillard a couple of years ago and then right. uh, they traded out. out. And then they were kind of stuck. And then they, you know, they, they made a pick that was kind of rushed. And like, well, and that then they traded it. for Laramie Tunsil, like, I mean, and, and set everything that, in motion. Totally. That's, that's a failure. That is a fail. You failed. Your, your draft plan fell apart. You, so you mm-hmm. failed. You get a failing grade. You get a passing grade if you execute your plan. So I would just say that's probably it. If they go into this and they make some panicky move, that's the worst case scenario to me. Because I think that's the only way you can properly grade a draft anyway right after it happens. Um, is to say, did they execute their plan or did they fail to execute it? And I think that's probably, it's a little wormy answer, but I think that's probably the first way to describe what would be a worst case scenario for them. I think that was a really, you said you were absent of logic and reason. That was a really practical answer. Um, <laughs> you know, like that, there was a lot of, a lot of meat to that answer. Um, Bobby, you mentioned Joseph Randall in, in a text to me uh, recently. There was a lot of meat on that bone. So good for you. Um, yeah. Okay. Th- th- this is, this is kind of in the vein of what would scare you, but I want a singular moment that is, Kyle, again, we've identified and established that neither of you are team Kyle Pitts, but what would, what would cause you to panic? And maybe it isn't even a Cowboys related thing. I mean, may, maybe it's, you know, somebody within the division, you know, maybe it's the Eagles and Devonte Smith. I mean, what, what would, what is something that would, you know, one of these nights you would go to sleep and be bothered. Uh, Bobby, I'll start with you. Uh, well, I mean, if they drafted Kyle Pitts, okay, I'm done. I promise. That. I, just, I promise. I promise. Um, now, is this specific to just anything in the draft or, or specific to NFC East rivals? Anything. Anything that would bother you within the lens of the I, Cowboys. If, if Field slipped or somebody like that slipped and Washington managed to jump ahead yeah, and get a quarterback, I, agree. I think Washington immediately getting a quarterback makes them a I, they'd be the favorite to me. If they had Justin Fields next year, I think they I would think they're a better football team than Dallas. And, and I mean, a lot of it's going to depend on how sustain, sustainable some of their stuff is um, just because that's a lot of resources they've invested in defense. It's kind of like the question with the Cowboys offensive line and some other things over the years of like, can you pay all these people to keep them long term? But in the short term and potentially the long term, Washington could really set themselves up to be in a great position and be a headache for Dallas. So to me, it would be Washington getting a, a franchise quarterback. I think that immediately puts Dallas in a bad position. 
Do you share that concern, Sturge? Is that, yeah, did, that did Bobby hit it on the head? He hit it right on the head. I, if for whatever reason, I have it in my head that five quarterbacks go in the first 10, right? So that's that's my head. That's where it's at. But if for whatever reason, something just didn't go right, and then Washington's sitting there with one of the options, you know, one of those five quarterbacks that I think can go in the first round, that might cause uh, a lot of concern. I'm not really worried about what Philadelphia is going to do because they just – I don't know. I, I feel like they can't get it right <laughs> lately. I, I just that's that's the fan in me. But uh, overall, yeah, he hit it right in the head. I was I was going to say, Fit, I think Fitz is going to give us Fitz this year. You know, I, I honestly always firmly believe that about, you know, Fitz magic. But uh, if they were to land their future quarterback, that would kind of just kind of eh, just wouldn't feel right. I think the opposite end of that spectrum is like um, if if Wash, whoever Washington took in the first round, if it was a non quarterback, but if if in round two, um, I guess you could call it a reach to your point, Bobby. You don't know anything, whatever, blah blah. But if they took Kellen Mond or Kyle Trask in round two, that would be kind of okay, you know, because that then that that adjusts their timeline overall, right? Like now now that's the quarterback that you've kind of bet this great defense's you know window on, like especially financially, like Chase Young it's on his rookie Drew contract, Lockett. right? Exactly. It's a Drew like, it's a Drew Locke. It's a Jalen Hurts. It's a Derek Carr. I mean, like any quarterback in the second round is generally that dude. Like there's a really low glass ceiling on them uh, because if teams didn't love them, you know, enough to take them with their first round pick, they're trying to like convince themselves they got to steal in the second round, which is really stupid um, overall. Um, what's what's something then that would, you know, cause you to sleep like a baby, Bobby? Like what, what, what? And it doesn't, maybe it's a player. Maybe it's if the Cowboys draft Sam Ellinger in the seventh round. Uh, but what is, <laughs> what is something that, um, that you, you would feel really pleased by and you know it, you can keep it as vague as you want you can get as specific as you want this is your thing um like like on a saturday thought or in the process of the draft ongoing overall start to finish any point I think whether, I, I, whether I, I, it's the appetizer or the dessert if the 49ers follow through and they take mac jones i think i feel Agreed. really good about that pushing down good players to dallas um if Cincinnati, if I saw they passed on Panay Sewell, I'd feel really good about potentially Panay Sewell getting there. That's your guy. Uh, that's that's who you've been hyping up. That is. Panay yeah. Sewell or Rashawn Slater. I love both of them. I think either one of them would be studs here in Dallas. And I don't know how much longer Tyron Smith's going to be here. And so it's I, I think it makes sense to upgrade left guard and then have your future left tackle. Um, and so, I, I mean, I think that seeing Mac Jones going to the 49ers, if we knew that, if we knew it was Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Mac Jones, then I'm confident Fields and Lance go somewhere in the next six picks after that. Whereas if Mac Jones doesn't go at three, I don't know that he goes in the next six picks after that. And so I think Mac Jones going to the 49ers would be a big relief early on on draft night is okay. That's going to push even more capital down to us and, and could put us in a good spot to either um, have a good player to pick from or if it pushes down a field or Lance by some miracle, maybe you're talking to new England about trading back and picking up future capital. And so uh, that would be a, a big boost to them. I think Sturge, how happy would a trade back make you? And obviously there's, there's a lot of context that's necessary, like what the capital is and who they ultimately land. Um, but, but if, if they trade out, are you immediately disappointed? Or are you, are you kind of calming down yeah. and waiting to see? I think it depends on, you know, how far back, you know what I mean? Like if they're, if they go to the Patriots and it's like a five slot back, I'm not, I'm not mad at it. You know what I mean? But if somebody else, for whatever reason in the twenties or something like that, says like, yeah, we'll give you this, this and that third. And then all of a sudden you're sitting there like, all right, well then we don't have anybody. And then you're looking at, you know, again, Jersey boys favorite, you know, uh, which I'm uh, the linebacker now can't draw a blank, but, um, no, no, no. Uh, Carson. Not David Marcy, Collins Mark, is David Collins. That is David Collins is one of the guys that we've been focusing on on that podcast. But then he got <laughs> then he weighed in. <laughs> and then I'm just like, uh, what which, are we, which I, we, I, asked, I asked some people about the David Collins. Wait, I don't know where he's at. I do know that there's a lot of people in the league that view him a def as a defensive end. And so even though I haven't gotten a firm answer on that, I do feel like it's possible he's bulking up because he's coming in there to look like a defensive lineman. Possibly, possibly, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, like I said, I would only, I would only get excited to trade back if I knew that a certain amount of other guys were going to be available. And I, I'm not sure about like, would we get this year's capital, or are we talking about next year? You know, so we, that that really depends on that. But to me, I, I'm staying put at, at, at ten. And you know, to answer the overall question, what would entice me to sleep like a baby if Friday night I go to sleep and they have addressed linebacker, corner, and safety mm -hmm. all in, all in the first two days? That'd be great. So, 
So we're going to get to our interview with Dane Brugler in a minute. But before that, I've said this several times on different shows here on the feed. I wrote about it at the site and I've tweeted about it several times. Um, the idea of trading back a few weeks ago, and I, I don't like I'm not trying to be the guy that's like the mainstream media is contaminating the world. But a few weeks ago uh, in, in one of Mel Kuyper's mock drafts, he had the Cowboys trading back with New England at 15. They still picked J.C. Horn, uh, who might not even make it to 15. That's a whole different discussion. But in the process and, and for that matter, New England traded up to get Justin Fields at 10 overall, which, you know, whatever. And I, th- I do think that if it was Justin Fields hanging around, that maybe ups the trade, you know, capital received a little bit more than if somebody's trading up for Trey Lance or whatever but the point is new england traded up for justin fields in this mock the cowboys moved back to 15 still took jc horn and walked away with new england's first round pick in 2022 now i don't know if either of you know this bobby might because i annoy him uh, more than most people uh, but the, the 10th overall pick has been traded on draft day in three out of the last six years i know we're going to ask dane about this as well i don't know if that's coincidence i don't know if it's just like a popular spot uh the the first time was in 2017 the bills moved back with the chiefs that was the patrick mahomes draft obviously um and the bills were the only team in this you know pool of examples to pick up a future first round pick they wound up trading it um and, and moving a lot but the point is they had to go all the way from 10 to 27 just to get a future first round pick in 2018 the then oakland raiders moved back with the Arizona Cardinals from 10 to 15, like Mel Kuyper outlined here, and a quarterback was involved. Arizona moved up to get Josh Rosen. Uh, I believe that uh, Vegas now, Oakland then, only picked up a third and fourth round pick, uh, and they wound up trading a third rounder from Martavis Bryant like a day later. Uh, but that's a whole different thing as well. Uh, finally, in 2019, Denver moved back from 10 to 20. We've talked a lot about 20 in the Chicago Bears. Maybe they're a team that comes up with Dallas, whatever. They did pick up a second round pick in that draft, and they later on used it to move up uh, to draft Drew Locke, who you mentioned so eloquently a moment ago, Bobby. And Pittsburgh did not go up for a quarterback. They went up for Devin Bush. It was like their first uh, first round trade in like 50 years or whatever it was. But my point is, I don't I don't think that a first round pick is, is I, I think it's even doubtful that you're getting a second round pick in, in, if you're moving back five, 10 spots. So I, yeah. I don't know if I'll start. I'll start with you. I don't know if you agree with that. No, I, I, I completely agree. If it's not. Yeah. If it, Moving back like that, like I said, if you don't get something that's going to immediately affect this team, we're like, what are we doing? You know what I mean? Like, I just, I don't know. I'm not a fan of that. Not not yet, at least. I mean, it, if certain things fall certain ways and you're like, well, that guy will be there in, in a couple more spots and that'll be okay, then maybe you entertain it. But like overall, like I'm just, I'm staying put. Bobby, do you think that the potential compensation has been um, – just sort of mystified in the cabin fever of the draft process that, that people are, are foolishly convincing themselves that they could pick up a future first or even a second round pick this season. We always uh, laugh about it that you remember like um, the, like training camp 2019 when it's like, well, if you're going to cut taco, why don't you just trade him for like a second round pick? <laughs> right, it's right, like, right. This has no concept of what, like, even after his first year, we're talking about like, maybe you get like a fifth or a sixth. You're not getting a second for him, but um, there is always a little bit of an oversight. I do think it's wishful thinking to think you could pick up a first by moving back five spots. Um, but I would be in favor of a, you know, a chiefs bill style trade or a, um, or a similar, I think it was, uh, it was the year after that in 2018 when the, uh, you're, talk, you're talking chiefs, the, the, the job, the Patrick Mahomes trade in 2007. Yeah. 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 Chiefs bills that trade. Or, or then like the following year when the, uh, the saints moved up and gave up a future first to the Packers so they could get Marcus, Marcus Davenport. Davenport. Right. And so, um, I'd be in favor of one of those trades because there's a lot of discussion about this and you'll see it kind of in the media, but it's being discussed in league circles too, which is, there are not that many players in this year's draft and next year is going to have an overabundance of them. And hopefully you'd have better, you know, you'd have a better ability to scout on the road and get to some of these schools and get to know people. And I think you'd feel more comfortable about some of your, of your evaluations than you do now. So I would take one of those drop backs, pick up a future first. So you have two first round picks next year. If you felt comfortable about a guy like uh, Trayvon Merrick, the safety at TCU being there at like 27 or something. If you could get Merrick at 27 and a future first, I'd take that over any of the corners in the draft at 10. See what I, I mean, if, if you're really truly crafting like practical, realistic Nirvana, I mean, 
I say move, you know, again, I'm, it's easy to play, right? Like you're saying, Bobby, like, oh, just do this. Just like I go back from 10 to 20. Cause I think, I do think that could merit a second round pick in this year's draft. And that would give them two seconds, two thirds, two fourths and take Caleb Farley at 20, right? Like, cause, cause at that point, the value makes more sense, whatever. And then use your second, your two seconds and move up back to 27 to take Trayvon or whatever. You know what I mean? Like I like I that know. idea I and like that, that combination more than almost anything else, but um, it is what it is. Let's see what Dane Brugler thinks. Bobby Bell, Dave Sturko going to take a moment to breathe. Uh, maybe go um, order Kyle Pitts jerseys. He's cool. He'd probably wear number 84. Uh, he's not one of these, you know, people that, that think single digits are the thing. Uh, so uh, we'll be right back everybody hang on we're gonna get to dame brugler kelsey charles and myself we'll be right back after this Pleased to be joined now by the one, the only, the legendary, internationally famous. I think he's part of uh, the Space Jam 3 cast ensemble. Uh, he has a lot going on if he has time for it. The one and only, the author of The Beast, the always beastly, Dane Brugler. Dane, thanks for joining Kelsey Charles and I here at uh, the Blog of the Boys podcast. Hour. Uh, no problem. I, I don't, it's going to be all downhill from here for, after that intro, but uh, <laughs> thanks for having me. Would you yeah. be in Space Jam 3 if, if the call came? Hey, if they needed a ball boy or, you know, uh, an extra for the stands, sure. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I think I like that's on yourself short. Um, but uh, <laughs> you're you're very busy, obviously, this time of year. Um, what is what is one question that you always hope to get asked that you rarely do when you do all these cycled interviews? Gosh, um, I don't I don't I don't know that I go into this like with a question that I'm hoping to be asked. Maybe, uh, you know, how my how are my kids doing at T-ball? You know, because okay. like, well, how are they, this, how are they doing? That's right. At this point, I'd rather be talking about that uh, than uh, Mac Jones, you know, <laughs> but uh, no, they, they're doing well. It, uh, they play for the Little Rascals. Um, cool. My son and daughter, they're on the same team. So it's, it's pretty cool to see them interact, uh, play catch, that kind of thing. So, you know, being five and four, it's pretty I guess, yeah, I was going to say terrible is a, a strong word, but uh, it's, uh, you know, they're, they're not very good at this point. It's a learning stage, put it that way. There's not much like actual scouting going on is what you're trying to say. It's Well, little- yeah, it's hard. It, it's hard not to like get involved. And I'm not, I'm not a coach, but uh, in second practice, I was out there. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. So uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's, it's definitely the fun part of, uh, you know, this age is getting, getting them involved with sports and, just kind of seeing them, uh, you know, have fun with it. So uh, when I was like, I think eight in Little League, they needed an extra like ump out of nowhere. And my dad volunteered and that yeah. will divide your house. You sure. know what I mean? Because like, it's like, dude, what are you doing? Helping this sure. team out, like whatever. Uh, so um, I've never forgotten that it's affected me in every day of my life. So just be careful uh, is, is what I'm saying. Yeah, no, it sounds like it. It's, it sounds like that's something that uh, it, it, it comes up still in your household. Okay, so right. Parenting so parenting warning for you. <laughs> um, Dane, um, what is one thing the Cowboys have to do in this draft? One thing they, they absolutely have to make sure they take care of. Uh, they just have to make sure they don't screw up the 10th pick. Uh, you know, you have a top 10 pick. Don't screw it up. Uh, and I, 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 you know, you look at the players that are there and, you know, they kind of match up well with what they need. Uh, I, I think this, the overwhelming favorite is it's going to be a corner. And uh, I, I, honestly, I don't know that. It's a lock to be Patrick Sertan. I think J.C. Horn is very much in the discussion. Um, you know, I think those are two the two favorites to be that pick. And maybe, who knows, maybe one of them will go ahead of the Cowboys at 10. It'll make their decision easier uh, if the Panthers go corner at 8, which is certainly possible. Um, but it'll get interesting if, say, Brashawn Slater's there at number 10. Um, I, Slater, to me... You could draw a lot of parallels with Zach Martin in terms of being a college tackle who could probably stay a tackle in the NFL. Uh, Some teams do grade him as a tackle, but I think if you're talking, what's just going to maximize his abilities on the football field, then you're moving him inside to guard. And so uh, how would the Cowboys handle that? Would they feel comfortable drafting him there as uh, just a versatile uh, player who can, you know, I think we use the word versatile a little too much for tackle or for offensive linemen in general. Rashawn Slater actually has five position versatility out there uh, with the way he's been working out at center. Uh, scouts have told me that they think he could do it. No problem. So um, I, Slater would be tough to pass on, but when you look at the corner depth chart and what they need outside and the fact that you have two really talented guys staring you in the face with Sertan and Horn, those two guys just are, they're their overwhelming favorites to be that 10th pick. So we talk about pick 10 a lot and it's a great position to be in, but I have to notice like, the last three out of six years, there's been a, a movement at pick 10. 
So about half the time, these teams have decided, hey, listen, we're going to you know, move up, move out. But is there something to that in your mind with pick 10? And also, do you see any potential feasibilities that the Cowboys could do something similar and maybe like trade back and, and, and get still have value at a couple picks beyond 10? Sure. And yeah, I, I don't know if that pick 10 really had, especially this year, because, you know, there's a chance we got a five quarterbacks going to top 10 and that's never happened before. So, you know, that's going to push some good players to 10. And maybe that's, you know, obviously it's a good thing for the Cowboys, but maybe that could drive up uh, the potential price of a trade back. If you're the Cowboys and you could get a good deal depending on who's there at 10. Um, and I, I just think they have to, like, how many first round grades do they have? If say they have 17 first round grades, then you better not go past that number 17th pick if you're trading down. So just making sure that you're going to get one of your first round players this year, that is, that's a big part of this. And just, you know, they have to be comfortable if say, you know, Zayvon Collins, for example, linebacker from Tulsa, if they have a first round grade on him, are they comfortable coming away in the first round uh, with Zayvon Collins uh, instead of one of those corners? Uh, Zayvon Collins and say a second round pick if there's a trade back. Um, you know, that's that's something they have to be comfortable with. And I think if you're the Cowboys, uh, you know, you sometimes, you know, it pays to trade back. You know, we, we talk all about how the NFL draft is basically just educated luck, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, the more draft picks you have, the, the better odds you are, you have of getting valuable players uh, that can impact your roster. So uh, adding another second round pick would certainly be uh, something that, that should interest this team. Uh, but you're doing it at the expense of trading away from a good player like a Sertan, like a Horn. So they just, and, but maybe they trade back three spots and still get one of those guys. You know, it's hard to say, but um, I, they just have to be comfortable with who they're trading back to get um, and passing on one of those corners. Dan, I think we we can like talk ourselves into any any sort of like branch of the tree, right? Like, you know, if, if there's only if four quarterbacks go in the top nine, you know, OK, cool. Now right. there's only one left. And so we, the value is there for whoever else uh, to kind of leverage that pick, whatever the case may be. In that sense, if you if you could manifest and I think uh, I think manifest is the name of like a really terrible NBC show, um, by the way, like about <laughs> about an airplane uh, it just popped in my mind. Um, canceled yet? <laughs> I, it's, I think it's still on. I oh, the, wow. I. I, the premise was really interesting. I'll say that. Um, so yeah. I, I said it was terrible. My wife and I watched a bit. But anyway, um, if you could manifest like a situation for 10, how many quarterbacks would you want to be left? Like what is the most advantageous idea that you can create for the ten, for the Cowboys if they do want to trade back? Well, sure. Yeah, obviously, the more quarterbacks, the better. And, you know, it's possible that uh, one or two are there. Uh, you know, let's play it out. Let's just say that, you know, we know quarterbacks are going one, two, three. OK, so theoretically, there's two other quarterbacks that we're talking about. Uh, you know, if uh, Kyle Pitts is the pick at four, Chase is the pick at five, Waddle's the pick at six, uh, at seven, the Lions, say they go Sewell, eight, the Panthers, uh, you know, let's just say they go um, either Sertan or Slater there. And then with nine, uh, you know, Micah Parsons could be in play. So we're talking about, um, and let's just say Trey Lance goes three. So we're talking about Mac Jones and Justin Fields being there at 10. And then, then that's where, I, I mean, I think there's probably a good chance we would have seen a team trade up already, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe seven or eight. I think those two spots, uh, they're open for business. They're looking to get out of there. Uh, the Patriots, uh, Washington, maybe. I don't know that Chicago would. Uh, the Raiders have done a ton of work on these quarterbacks. So never rule them out. So if maybe one of those teams wanted to trade up to seven or eight to get fields, I think that's a very plausible scenario. Um, so I don't know. I, I think that there's a pretty – I would say adequate chance that one of those quarterbacks, most likely Mac Jones would be there, uh, especially if Mac Jones doesn't go three. He would be there at 10. But at that point, I don't know that you're necessarily going to get that trade offer. If you're the Patriots, uh, you're kind of thinking, well, we just sit here at 15 and see if Mac mm -hmm. Jones falls to us. And if he does, great. If he doesn't, then, you know, I, I don't think we're, you know, I think we're okay. So um, I, it, it just, I, I think that the Cowboys fans need to be ready to stay put and pick because I think that's the, the most likely scenario here. So we've talked about the first round into oblivion and I'm sure you are so tired of talking about Patrick Sertan, <laughs> especially when it comes to Cowboys shows. But what about the picks beyond that? Because the Cowboys have significant roles they need to fill otherwise. So what are some names that you think could make a lot of sense for this team and that you feel like if the team went away with them and said, you know, we're picking you, that you'd feel good about their chances and what they've done in the draft this year? 
Yeah, I mean, we just had the point to last year, and I don't think anybody in that Cowboys war room thought they would be able to get Trevon Diggs in the mid-second round last year. So, you know, first off, obviously, you have to wait and see how those first, what they're picking at 44, so wait and see how those 43, first 43 picks play out. Maybe you have a player that has a, uh, maybe not a first-round grade, but like a borderline grade, like a Diggs. Uh, maybe he were to fall to you there at 44. And so... Uh, you know, you, you keep your options open there. And I think, you know, you're looking at these offensive line classes. It's one of the better offensive line classes we've had in a while. So maybe there's an offensive lineman there that maybe they're not targeting an offensive lineman there, but the value is too good because they had a high grade on that offensive lineman. And you can never go wrong uh, in theory, I should say, that the player just might not work out, but you can never go wrong targeting an offensive lineman just in terms of your plan of how to build the roster. Um, I think when you talk about specific players, there are a few that definitely stand out there. Um, you know, which safeties fall that far? Would they draft a safety there? Uh, you know, Trevon Merrick from TCU, does he last that far? Probably not. Uh, Richie Grant from UCF, who is my top ranked safety this year. I think you just do a little bit of everything. Um, you know, I, I split safety, uh, you know, can play down in the box and can uh, play some single high, can do whatever you want. Uh, I, I think if he were uh, to be available, I, I think that'd be great value. Um, and I think, you know, last year, uh, you know, we, we saw the safeties fall to the second round, and that was the sweet spot, whether it was Jeremy Chin or Antoine Winfield. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of safety action in that second round. And I think it will be similar this year, and the Cowboys could be one of them. Javon Holland from Oregon. Uh, you know, we, we know the defensive coordinator of this team went to Oregon to watch him uh, in person uh, to watch Holland's pro day. So don't rule out him uh, there at 44. Um, and I think they also want, they want to get better on the defensive line. And I think somewhere on day two is going to be that sweet spot, whether it's going to be on the edge, whether it's going to be on the, in the interior. And this is not a great defensive tackle class. In fact, it's really, really bad defensive tackle class. But if a Levi Onzerike from Washington, a uh, local kid from Allen, if he were to be there uh, at 44, I, I think that he would definitely be in the conversation. There would be some conversations about let's, let, let's take him or do we take the safety? We take you know, whoever else is there. Onzerike would be really, really uh, appealing there for the Cowboys. Uh, Milton Williams for Louisiana Tech, another player they like, uh, could be, you know, this team's Tyron Crawford, inside-outside versatility. So, you know, the, I, I expect them to go defense there unless there's an offensive lineman that I think just kind of blows them away with, you know, just still being on the board. Dane, Kelsey's right. Um, we've talked about the first round fair. She's right about all things, really. Uh, most yeah. things. Uh, but um, and, and you've talked about this in a number of capacities. You're on every show. I think uh, you're after Joe Buck on the Jeopardy host rotation, if I'm <laughs> correct. Uh, but but um, I'd, I'd but, love that. It would be so sick. Um, it's uh, I'd actually never watched Jeopardy before Aaron Rodgers. Like that got me into it. Now I'm kind of oh, wow. hooked. So, uh, oh, wow. but uh, so the Cowboys have ten picks, as you well know. If you had to set an over under at nine and a half, do you think they'll they'll pick ten times, or, or would you take the under on that? Probably the under. Um, but I think here's the thing: is uh, you know a lot of teams are looking to do the same thing and either add picks next year which I, I promise you we're going to see some trades this year where maybe you know a team trades a fourth rounder uh, this year for a third rounder next year. Uh, just, you know, in theory, we'll have more information on the draft class next year. So we're going to see a lot of that. Um, but I think a lot of teams are taking that, that same type of, uh, you know, look at saying, you know, we've got nine, 10, 11 picks. Let's, let's trade up or let's unload some of these picks and make sure we're getting uh, seven, eight quality players. Um, so maybe if you target a team of Seahawks who have, three picks in this entire draft uh, for maybe some trade action, uh, a team that's maybe looking to add a few picks, then that makes sense. I would say the under, I would say they make maybe eight, nine picks in this draft, but it can be tough because you always need a trade partner and, you know, it has to work out. But at the end of the day, I'd say good bet. They don't make all 10. All right. So last question for you. And of course I have been dying to ask you this for a minute. Uh, draft crazy prediction. Does it have to be Cowboys related, but uh, I would love to get, just something that you think might happen that could knock some socks off. Um, you know, I would say it's hard to it's hard to know what, what would surprise what wouldn't just because we've been so through so many scenarios uh, of what could happen um, that I think we've kind of covered everything up to this point. I don't know if there's a, you know, a Cleveland Farrell or, you know, just that name in the top five that would shock us. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, I'm, I'll, I'll say I'll say Trey Lance goes three. I don't, and I, I don't even know if that's a shocker or not. You know, I you know, we've been hearing Mac Jones, Mac Jones. Uh, you know, Justin Fields is the 
uh, you know, the betting favorite right now, or at least he was, I'll say Trey Lance is, is the pick at number three. I th- that was the first name that came to my mind when the trade was made as being uh, the ideal fit. When you look at the player, his strengths, um, you know, the size, the athleticism, uh, just his, his arm talent, the intelligence, uh, what he could mean for a Kyle Shanahan offense. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if any of those three quarterbacks is the pick at three, just because I, I don't think anybody really knows. We're kind of guessing Kyle Shanahan's keeping the, the cards close to the vest. But I'll say that Trey Lance is the pick there at number three. Dane. Dane Brugler on Twitter at DP Brugler from The Athletic, from everywhere, really every <laughs> outlet um, on the Internet um, and otherwise known. Uh, Dane, enjoy. I, I don't know if like is this do you consider this Christmas or is like Christmas like the first week of the offseason for you? <laughs> The, uh, when we get there to, to draft, uh, you know, that it was seven o'clock, uh, that, that first Thursday night, then it'll be Christmas. This is like honestly one of the worst times because it's, you know, we, we've beaten every scenario into, into death. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, you know, <laughs> let's just let's just draft already. You know, I'm ready to talk about fits and how this guy is going to fit here as opposed to what could happen. Um, but, you know, it's just it, it's part of the process and we'll, we'll get there soon enough. Yeah, the energy is very um, like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jingle All the Way, like looking for the Turbo Man. You know, like just com- complete yeah. stress. Uh, Dane, you thanks so much. Me. You know, I've never seen it. Oh, I, I don't know how Kelsey's never seen Jingle All the Way. Have you not seen that? Come on. Um, so for whatever. You're, you're, you're a child of the '90s, right? I mean, I know. It, oh, it's a long story, my friend. We'll we'll go okay. offline about it. It's tragic. Uh, Dane, thanks so much for taking the time to join us. Uh, enjoy the week. Really appreciate it. Anytime. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot to Dan Brugler, to Kelsey Charles for taking the time to join the blog and the boys roundtable back here with Sturch and Bobby Um, Sturch, Bobby and I really hate the new single digit thing. As we mentioned before we, we tossed to the interview. Um, I don't know how you feel about it, but Bobby and I are like upset. Like we really, really don't like this change. I, I despise it. And I think I despise it. I think I despise it more because like one of the first people to react was Jalen. (laughs) <laughs> no. I think that's why I got mad. Like, I think originally I'm like, oh, that's kind of silly. I'm old school. You know, when I was a kid and I was playing ball and I had to play offensive line, they told me what I had to do. And it was like 50, 60s. And I was like, OK, fine. Even though my favorite number at the time was, the you know, the guy behind me, 21. You know, like that was my number at the time. Like, I don't it. It freaks me out to see like in college kickers that are wearing like 96. Like, I, mm-hmm. I just I never got into it. I didn't like it. Then this this thing passes, you know, obviously Gallup made a funny joke and Dak replied saying like, no, but I'll throw you some touchdowns, but nice try. You know, like, but I just if you're coming into the league, fine. Like if that's the new rule. Fine, whatever. But if you have a current number like I felt bad for like not just the Cowboys, but like the whole NFL. What are they supposed to do with all that inventory? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like they're just supposed to like, like give it out like the you know the loser of the Super Bowl and just send it across the world. You know what I mean? Like what do we do? You, you're gonna what? Well, you're gonna say like I had Jalen Smith's jersey when he was 54. You know what I mean? Like I don't who's saying that. Like who's who's that no, person? I'm just saying like that's like, <laughs> not for him in particular. Yeah, no, but like you know like I had this jersey. But then like he like, again he's nine to me that's that's Tony. I'm sorry. Like you, you don't know, you don't mess around with that. You know who I feel for. Um, the most like ardent Jalen Ramsey fan. Cause think about this. All right. Cause he's been really vocal about wanting to wear number eight that he wore at Florida state, obviously. Um, so Jalen Ramsey's drafted in 2016 when the Jaguars still have the awful uniforms, the, the, uh, what a blend helmet that they had. <laughs> right. Uh, so, but say, say you're like the biggest Jalen Ramsey fan in the world. You buy that Jersey. Right. And say you're like, you know, one of us that's like obsessed with the uniforms. I got to have like the best, the newest, whatever. And that like two years later, the Jaguars changed uniforms to what they're currently wearing the like standard you know all black teal white ones and so you're like well let me get a new jalen ramson because these are the new jaguars uniforms right and then he gets traded and you're like well you know that's my guy so i'll get a new rams jersey a new jalen ramsey rams jersey and then the rams get new jerseys so you're like well crap like they're never going to wear the one i just bought fine like they just changed jerseys he's on the rams signed the contract i don't have to worry about this like give me the newest jalen ramson jersey, and i can feel totally fine and totally at peace that right. this is my guy forever and now he wants to change numbers so like you know you could conceivably have like or be in a situation where you need to buy your fifth Jalen Ram jersey and it, 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 like in five years that's nuts and if you're one of these guys that need the authentic you're looking at like a, a house payment <laughs> that's that's like, Bobby Bell Bobby needs the true authentic deal I mean um, 
<laughs> imagine if you're like a, like a big Cheeto Woozy fan too. Like you bought 33 mm-hmm. and then 24 and then you're going to buy this Bengals jersey. And then when they have to switch back from these horrible uniforms that they just That's unveiled next year, you'll have to buy a fourth jersey. I mean, Cheeto's going to be moving a lot of product. That's a great point too. Um, anyway, uh, okay, let's get back to um, draft-related things. Sturge, you already kind of made your, your case on this, so we know how you feel. Bobby, Kyle Pitts aside, should the no. Cowboys trade Michael Gallup during the draft? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't. I mean, I, I think you just but, go but ahead. Only, and only if they draft him. Kyle Pitts said it. That's the only way you're justifying it. Yeah, but even still, I don't. I, I think I'd still prefer keeping Gallup. You know, it's one of those. And I get the whole. He's not a normal tight end, but like, there's been enough tight ends that have been like, oh, Vernon Davis is going to change the position, and uh, T.J. Hawkinson's going to change the position, and Noah Fant, and it's and you know uh, who's that guy with the Lions? Who, why am I uh, blanking? Eric Ebron. Yeah, Ebron. I wanted to say Ansa. They've drafted so many freaks that weren't actually panning out when they had them because Hawkinson and Ebron. And um, so I, 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 I don't like the idea that you're still banking on something. Whereas Gallup, you know, is good. Like I would just go ahead and and I'd prefer they just keep Gallup now and look to like maybe the fourth. This is a pretty deep receiver draft. I would just look to the fourth round to find a solid replacement for him that you can have CD and Amari as the top two the year after. And then you can, uh, you know, go with some combination of your rookie and, you know, Cedric Wilson or something like that, who, who showed promise last year and seemed to have good chemistry with Dak. Give us a, a name you like, Bobby, a day three wide receiver. We did a late round, um, you know, names to know video on the YouTube channel that you're watching this on. Potentially, if you listen to the podcast, you can go see Bobby and search his beautiful faces, uh, both lots of facial hair, intimidating me. No big deal. Uh, but, uh, we, we, wow. Okay. Did you shave like at 8 a.m. or something? Uh, I cut my hair. It's gone. Wow. Bobby's also a big fraud if you're watching on YouTube. He wears a Callaway yeah. cap. I don't think he's ever swung a golf club in his life. Uh, but I, whatever. I this is Brent Callaway at Exos. He's my buddy, and I just like to wear his last name. That's not when you bought it, but whatever. Anyway, uh, we, we mentioned Amir Smith Marset, and I always butcher this. It's a, it's a complex for me. Uh, Bobby, you can help me out here. Josh Amir Bibi. The meter baby? I, can't, meter baby? I can't be trusted to pronounce that. I, I know I know the name, but I can't pronounce it either. But so give us a give us a late round wide receiver. Uh day three wide receiver, Simi Fihoko from Stanford. That dude's okay. DK Metcalf light, I think. That guy, he's 6'3, 230. He's got good speed. He's got hobs. Like that's a that's a special player, I think. And so Simi Fihoko from Stanford is a guy that I think would be a really good pick on day three. Sturch, I mentioned this kind of jokingly about Sam Ellinger. Should the Cowboys draft a quarterback? Or rather, let me rephrase. Do you think they'll draft a quarterback? This is Mike McCarthy, and we know he likes to have developmental project quarterbacks. Obviously, Ben DiNucci didn't supremely pan out his rookie season, didn't have preseason, had to start unexpectedly, all the qualifiers. But um, it's fair to say maybe they move on from him. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe they put him on the practice squad, whatever. I mean, you know. It's it's fair that if if Sam Ellinger, whatever you know, that's that's a hot name in the state of Texas, obviously. But uh, yeah, I mean, I would, do, I would like do, you, do you think they draft a quarterback? Yeah, and I think it's it's who you just mentioned, and I think that that's such a good connection. Obviously, the Texas connection and all that good stuff, but. Yeah, the Danucci thing was uh, you can't even call it an experiment. That that was just like a complete cluster f. You know what I mean? Like that was just bad news football that day and like and it's not there's no fault of it you know it's not his it's all not all him is what i'm saying they had so many missing parts because right. he's on the run the entire time but they have to address it they have to considering what just happened last year i still think that they i mean i don't know who's left and we have to analyze it i kind of was politicking for an alex smith before he announced his retirement you know we need i thought we would need the veteran but i guess at this point Dax, your veteran, you know what I mean? So now you need the understudy. And I think the ones that we have on the roster right now are not, they're not it, you know? So I think a new, new, some new blood for McCarthy to kind of mold into his project. I think, I think that's the guy. I think that that would be nice. You know, you're looking, uh, I want to say fifth, sixth round. Yeah. Like I, I've seen the grades on him. Um, and he, you know, we'll see how long he lasts, but I think that'd be, uh, you know, an ideal situation. Yeah. Bobby, do you think they draft a quarterback? Not should they, or or not do you think they should, but do you think they will? I mean, I got to agree with Bear there in the background. I know, I, 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 I absolutely, uh, I, I think they probably will. I couldn't tell you who it's going to be. Because, um, I mean, I, 
I thought, yeah, they're probably going to draft a quarterback at some point last year. And I wouldn't have, you know, picked out Ben DiNucci from, but I also think that I, I do think that they have some level of comfort that Dak is going to be healthy and that behind them, they just want to develop DiNucci. And I think they felt good about kind of what they saw from Garrett Gilbert. So I don't know that they're going to feel any sort of, uh, you know, need to go out and do anything other than just develop their guys. I mean, this point was made. And so this isn't an original one. This was something that a lot of people said, but like, had you stuck Romo in a game, his rookie year, like you did DiNucci, it probably looks similar. And so I, I think that there's still a little bit of, uh, you know, leniency to be given. Um, he's still, you know, he was still learning a ton. He, um, we actually, Jane and I got to talk to him during training camp and he had said that he learned more in the first two weeks of camp in the quarterback room than he had learned his entire football career up into that point that he had already learned more in that little stretch than his entire life. And so there's a lot to learn. Um, and there's a lot to like about his game. I think and about his potential, I'm not saying he's going to go out there and be, you know, a pro bowler one day, but I do think that he can be, you know, a, a solid backup quarterback over time. What sucks is, um, again, I'm against the single digit thing, but like, you know, let a wide receiver wear seven, like Ben DiNucci's hogging, you know, a really great number <laughs> here real estate right there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, you know, it is what it is. Uh, two more questions for you guys before we get out of here and two things that Dane Brugler touched on in the interview. Uh, the first I asked him, we all know the Cowboys have 10 picks. Um, I asked Dane, over under nine and a half, how many picks they ultimately make, but I'm going to shorten it for you guys. Over under is eight and a half number of picks. They ultimately make um, Bobby over under over for sure. I don't, I don't think it's under. So I, thinking, I, think they may, I think they maybe sacrifice one of them, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if they trade back with any of their first three picks and pick up so, more later on. So I, I so think they make, you're saying they still maybe pick 10 players, even if that's including some couple of trades, if they move back a couple yeah. of times. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't think they give up, you know, typically like when you've seen them make trades in the past too, when moving up, I think a lot of times what we've seen, if they're making day three move ups, it's a lot of times future stuff. It's not necessarily stuff that they're trading from back in the draft. And so, um, yeah, I, I think that ultimately, even if they do make one of those trades, like an Xavier Woods type trade where they go up and they, they or try to be oddish. Wow. No response yeah, to Tyler be oddish. I, I think if they make one of those trades, um, I, I think they'll have made other trades during the course of the draft to maybe move back and pick up extra capital. So I still think they pick above eight and a half. Stretch over under eight and a half. Over. I, I firmly believe that this team is, you know, they lost a pretty decent, significant amount of players. You know what I mean? They're going to have to replace them. And I think this offseason is a lot different than last offseason as far as the draft class is concerned. You know, you're putting these guys on Zoom calls on the early going, and it was just a mess. So I think that you're going to have not only – more than eight and a half, you know, nine players plus, but at least they're also going to get their feet wet relatively sooner than they did last year. Interesting. Um, okay. Last question. This was Kelsey's question to Dane. So if you guys don't like it, blame her, um, oh, wow. not me, but uh, she asked Dane, you know, as everybody listening heard um, what, you know, would be the most surprising potential thing to happen in the draft entirely, not necessarily Cowboys related. And he said that he didn't know that there was necessarily like a Cleveland Farrell thing coming around the bend. Uh, but he ultimately said Trey Lance going three overall to San Francisco. Uh, the challenge to each of you is to keep it Cowboys specific. What would merit um, kind of a Jalen Smith pick reaction for you, Sturge? Like, and it doesn't have to be a specific player, but, but something they do that just feels so far out of left field that, that you are truly and legitimately stunned. Uh, if they trade back into the first round this year. Wow. Okay. That's that would it. like, that would really stun you is what you're saying that I would love, like, look, I would love it, it but it would shock the hell out of me. I, I, I think they're, you know, if they stay put at 10 and they make their pick, their next pick is early enough in the second round to still get some quality people. But if they go back up and, and make that kind of move to grab whatever they didn't grab at 10, you know, on their big board, that's going to make me not only happy, but just kind of be like, they're, they're trying. They're, they're, this is, they're making some move. They're, they're going for it right now. Okay. All right. I like that answer. Uh, Bobby, Sturge had a really great answer. Really tough for you to come up with a better one, but you can try if you want He's to. He's going to top. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously I could say something like, uh, you know, well, the most shocking thing would be like they picked Justin Fields if he's sitting there. But like it, it, within the realm of possibility. Like I, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> within the realm of possibility. <laughs> Within the realm of possibility, uh, I'm still not able to shake the odd feeling I get from Daniel Jeremiah, who's pretty plugged in, putting Quiddy Pay as his most recent oh. pick for the Cowboys, and the defensive end from Michigan. Uh, he that had was CD a little earlier than a lot of people did last year. To your point, 
Yes, but I do know Daniel's connected. Daniel's a former right, scout. Right, Daniel right. talks to these people. And so when DJ puts Quiddy Pay there, it's like, man, that doesn't just feel like something he's doing. That feels like, even if that's not who they picked, that feels like he at least knows they like him and they like him enough to at least consider him if they're wiped out or if they're in a certain position. Um, so so I guess that would be my answer is, is that within the realm of reason, I'd be pretty stunned if it was Quiddy Pay, but I at least think it's possible because DJ threw it out there. They took him over both corners. Yeah. I mean, like, what's, what's, what's the level of failure then? Mm-hmm. I mean, and again, like, to go back to your earlier point, like, you know, failure is measured over time, but, like, what's the immediate moment of failure feel like to you? Uh, I mean, I like Quiddy Pay. I kind of wonder if DJ <laughs> DJ doesn't project. I mean, I don't like him enough to take him at 10. I kind of wonder if DJ just maybe has heard rumbles that they – trade back and maybe a trade back target would be quitty. And so because he doesn't mock trades, I wonder if he's just mocking player to team that he think ultimately happens. And maybe he thinks mm-hmm. he'll pay later on. Yeah. Just calmed something. everybody down, Bobby. So I'm, yeah. just saying, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying, I, I, I kind of wonder if he's more just, if he's more uh, projecting where the player ends up rather than what number it's at. All right. Well said. Uh, well said by both of you. Very, very, very last one uh, with the 10th overall pick the Cowboys take who stretch. Uh, I'll take a page right out of, uh, at, you know, draft day, the movie Costner style and say, like, it's written on my little pad here. Patrick Sertain, no matter what. Robert. Uh, I'm going to be different. I'll say J.C. Horn. Mm. So you're saying you wanted to say Patrick Sertain. You just wanted to be different, though. No, I think I think there's a genuine. I think it, it, I don't think Pitts will be there. I think it'll be. I don't think Sewell will be there. If Sewell is there, I think they take Panay Sewell. But I, I don't think Sewell gets there. And so I think you're looking more like Slater or one of the corners. And I think there's I think there will be some debate. And so I, I think it could be a coin flip between Sertan and Horn. So I think it's just as equally possible that it's either of them. All right. Bobby is on Twitter at Bobby Belt TX. You can hear him with Jane on the Boys and Girl podcast that they do on the Herd Podcast Network. Does a great job. Bobby will find anything you've ever thought. Um, Bobby will make sure that you are reminded about at some point in your life. Uh, Sturch is on Twitter at Dave Sturchio. Makes it nice and easy for you. You can see, hear him at Chop Sports. You can hear him on the Jersey Boys podcast. You're on the Blog of the Boys podcast. Never create him at the Cowboys Wire. You guys got to stop doing so much. I'm running out of breath uh, trying to catch up with everybody. I will. Uh, <laughs> Uh, big thanks to Dane Brugler for Kelsey Charles for joining us earlier on in the show. It's draft week, everybody. Looking forward to it. We'll have you covered, obviously, all week long at bloggingtheboys.com, here on the podcast network, and right here on the YouTube channel as well. Everybody have a great week. We'll talk to you next time.